All right, everybody, welcome back. I know I just did a video, but uh, it's been a busy few nights and I've got a lot of progress that I want to share with you all as well as uh, some things that other people are doing that I thought would be interesting. Um, I'm going to start off the video the way I did my last one, standard uh, silver blue 37 install, nothing up my sleeve. I'm going to copy a command here and then paste it and then we'll go over it. I am rebasing this install of Fedora silver blue from the standard Fedora to my own customized image that I'm building on GitHub and hosting on the GitHub container registry. Um, I'm not signing any of these images. And just like before, these are for demonstration purposes only to kind of show you uh, what the move to an image based workflow will look like for Linux. So um, there's so much stuff to talk about server side. Uh, I can't even wait to talk about it, but uh, I figured I'd talk about desktop first because it's something that people are familiar with, especially those of you uh, that might not come from the cloud land. So what we're doing here is rebasing off of an image and we're moving away from kind of interacting with RPM OS tree and a system package manager to just having everything built um, by machinery in the cloud and then just splatting that image onto the machine and it gives us reliable updates, uh, we get rollbacks and no possibilities of you accidentally uh, messing up your um, your like package manager locally. So an example, uh, you know, you're moving from 30, uh, Fedora 37 to say 38. Uh, sometimes you have to update your repositories or do all the kinds of things that you have been doing on the Linux desktop for a long time. And um, those days are coming to a close here pretty soon and I'm really excited to see it. So this is gonna work for a bit and we're gonna do a reboot here. So let me just pull over a browser and see what we're doing here. So um, here, oh, one of these days I'm gonna get these resizing things right. Um, I went ahead and moved some things around. Uh, I, I wanted to make a base image and then my customizations on top. So what we're doing here instead of um, kind of configuring your system locally, uh, you generate a, a Docker file. So here I'm basing, uh, like I showed in my last video, uh, from Fedora uh, Silverbrew 37. I have a first boot script that will install some flat packs. I remove the distro Firefox, install uh, DistroBox GNOME tweaks. You've seen this before in my last video there, I install some system D units. Um, and then I did add a feature that kind of popped up a Zenity thing at the end that said, you know, um, would you like to keep the Fedora desktop or would you like to, you know, use the desktop that I am trying to build for myself, which is more Ubuntu, more traditional-ish looking one. Um, so instead of just asking, I, I would figure I just would make two images because that's kind of the, the cloudy thing to just derive off of different images. So I have a base image here that kind of fixes the things that, you know, I wish uh, I could just have out of the box. Um, in Fedora, but you know, uh, they can't do that for one reason or another. I'm not here to discuss those. Uh, you know, the internet's going to be arguing about that until the cows come home. Um, but I did want a base image for a few reasons. I, I wanted a upstream GNOME experience as well for anyone that wants one. So you could just rebase to this um, image. However, in order to uh, keep uh, seeing what I could do, I also created my own custom image here that kind of added the things that I wanted, app indicators, dash to dock, the Ubuntu theme. And thanks to some help from some really great people, um, I was able to figure out, oh, by the way, if you're ever in GitHub, you can hit period and it'll just open it in VS Code, which is really handy when you want to browse for stuff. I had forgotten this despite doing um, GNOME desktop sysadmin back in the day, uh, that you can declaratively um, write a file and then the GNOME desktop will look like that with deconf. In my older scripts, I was kind of just writing to the keys after the fact. Now I can declare these, which is really nice, including, you know, my favorite apps, what I want the doc to look like, what extensions I want enabled. And in the past, what I did is I ran a deconf dump on an Ubuntu desktop and then imported it here. Here, I was a little bit more pickier. You know, I kind of wanted to figure out what the major things that I like in Ubuntu are uh, that I wanted in Fedora. So things like the font, uh, the theme, I like minimize, maximize and close buttons and things like that. So I was able to go 
and make you know a file uh, this file is less than 50 lines long of the things that i want now normally i would go machine you know when you do a new install you can figure it the way you want or maybe you ha might have a script that does that right i'm thinking i just get that and it's part of the uh image so, uh, so that's what i did there and then um i did find out that there was an issue with running a d so after you do dconf um, changes to a system. You have to type the dconf update command. However, that doesn't really work right in RPM OS tree. And I didn't know that until 20 minutes ago when Josh Stone told me, so thanks. Um, so I was kind of struggling with this for a long time this evening in my lab. And um, so I just wrote a one shot unit uh, that will just run dconf update. Sure, whatever. Um, and then once that's fixed, I'll get rid of that. And then notice here, I'm not basing off of Walter's or the silver blue image, right? I'm basing off of my base image because what I want to do is do have like a good base image. That's kind of like the default that I would feel comfortable giving to someone. Right. And then, um, what I wanted to do is have, this is like my Ubuntu image, right? If you wanted a different layout, uh, so I'm going to make myself like a work one that has all my work tools and things like that, that will also derive from this images. So I can keep everything nice and clean and separated and those built uh, separately. So let's see what's going on here. So the script is finished. Let's go ahead and reboot. Uh, let me get back to my Firefox, which is here. Where is it? I put it somewhere. Oh, it's... oh boy. All right, let's close, let's close this up. Um, and while that's rebooting, then I'm going to go back and, and to show you some of the other stuff that people are working on. So now thanks to that first boot script, uh, that is the Ubuntu sound theme that I set in the decomp keys. Um, and here's where I'm doing the thing where I'm like replacing the Fedora flat packs and flat hub and whatnot. But as you can see already, it kind of, you know, I have a custom wallpaper. I think I'm going to do something like ship all the Ubuntu LTS wallpapers or something like that. But I've moved the dock to the left and it's enabled a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I don't think that you can see this yet, but um, it has set my uh, shortcut key. So control alt T. Uh, which is like the thing I've wanted in Fedora forever because uh, just Ubuntu has that. And as you can see here, it has the uh, Fedora fonts that I installed, just like I declared in that file. Um, and because I'm shipping GNOME tweaks on my base image, I just have that. I don't have to overlay anything. Oh, hold on, I got a bit of a cursor issue there. And if we go to the fonts, these are the Ubuntu fonts that I wanted. I changed the anti-aliasing to match Ubuntu and stuff. Here's my minimize, maximize and stuff. Pretty neat, huh? Um, now what's really cool is because I set the deconf keys uh, ahead of time, the doc layout is already done the way I wanted and I, I matched it with how Ubuntu ships by default. So here in a minute, it's gonna prompt me for my password because um, I'm still kind of running a script and that's interactive still. And I don't really have, there's no, I can't really find a smart way to declare what apps to install. I was able to get Ansible running uh, inside the container file, which is really handy and use those modules. Um, however, flat packs, one install in slash var, and I can't really write there yet. So we'll figure that out. So for now, we're just doing a first, first boot script. Um, so as it's installing the apps, they'll actually show up on the dock as they're being installed, which I thought was kind of like a funny consequence uh, uh, of this happening. So um, this is a long step here. There's a lot of uh, Fedora flat packs. These are things like the map viewer and all that stuff. And I just wanted to switch those off to flat hub. So uh, that is doing its thing. Let's see if I can keep it. Oh, no, nope, that was a bad idea. Um, we definitely want to wait for the Firefox icon to show up because it's cool. So we're gonna go do that. So one of the, the reasons I think we wanna move to a model like this is if it's not obvious to you or you're wondering, you know, what I'm even doing is the move away from having like a system that you are making all the changes to um, locally, uh, you know, when you're doing the kind of like maintenance-y important things and more consuming an image that is built um, on a server 
that is, you know, has tests integrated and all of that kind of stuff. So that like the image always comes to you in it's kind of like final prepared state. So you don't get into that situation, you know, the Linus tech tips situation where you zigged instead of zag with a local package manager, or you installed the wrong repo and you ended up with a broken package manager, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of reliability things that, um, benefits that we get by moving this and look at this. We're, um, it's starting to fill in the stuff. I thought that was kind of neat. There's a bug here. This is supposed to be in PAL mode. The deconf key is set, but it doesn't quite figure it out. I think it's an extension specific issue. I don't know, but generally speaking, everything works uh, so far, uh, you know, considering I've only been trying this for the past uh, day and a half, then it installs all the apps I want. So pretty cool, huh? Now it gets interesting is AK Dev posted this and this is a, oops, well, where they unposted it. Um, their container file starts with Fedora, installs RPM Fusion, installs and builds the NVIDIA kernel modules, right? And then grabs the silver blue stuff and then changes the repos. Um, or did he change this? No, I, no, this has changed before. Um, anyway, this changed under, underneath me, so I'm confused now. But basically, um, they were able to make it so that the NVIDIA modules and things are built on the server side so that on your computer, you never get a situation where the drivers didn't build and then you get like a black screen, right? If this fails, this just fails on the GitHub side and um, you just wouldn't get an image that day or however long it's published. So I thought that's really interesting. Uh, lots of good things starting to land in this thread and uh, lots of people are starting to get involved. So uh, I was really excited by this. Um, you know, considering I haven't really admin anything in a long time and had to relearn deconf and all that stuff. That's pretty neat. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what other things people are building. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Have a good time. Thanks, everyone.